Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and you're so welcome for the announcement of this year's Nobel Prize in Official Your Medicine. My name is Thomas Perlman and I'm the Secretary General of the Nobel Assembly. I will first read the announcement in Swedish followed by English. We will then, uh, as usual, present some background to the prize and open up for questions. Nobelförsamlingen vid Karolinska institutet har idag beslutat att Nobelpriset i fysiologi eller medicin år 2025 ska delas lika mellan Mary Brankov, Fred Ramsdell och Shimon Sakaguchi för deras upptäckter rörande perifer immuntolerans. The Nobel Assembly at Karolinska Institutet has today decided to award the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine jointly to Mary Branko, Fred Branstel and Shimon Sakaguchi for their discoveries concerning peripheral immune tolerance. Here are the three laureates. Mary Branko was born in 1961 in uh, and received a PhD from Princeton University in the United States. The work for which she is awarded was performed at the biotech company Celtech Chiroscience in Bothell, Washington. She is currently a senior program manager at the Institute for Systems Biology in Seattle. Fred Ramsdell was born in 1960 and received a PhD in 1987 at the University of California in Los Angeles. The work for which he is awarded was performed at the same biotech company, Celtech Chiroscience. He is currently a scientific advisor at the company he himself founded, Sonoma Biotherapeutics in San Francisco and in Seattle. Shimon Sakaguchi was born in 1951, earned an MD in 1976, and a PhD degree in 1983 from Kyoto University in Japan. The work for which he is awarded was initiated at Aichi Cancer Center Research Institute in Nagoya. He is currently a distinguished professor at the Immunology Frontier Research Center at Osaka University. I now turn to Professor uh, Marie uh, Warren Herlenius, member of the Nobel Committee, who will now describe this year's Nobel Prize discoveries. Please, Marie. This year's Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine relates to how we keep our immune system under control so we can fight all imaginable microbes and still avoid autoimmune disease. Let me explain. We are constantly exposed to a myriad microbes and our immune system has developed to protect us from them. To detect all different varieties of microbes, existing ones and ones that may come, specialized cells in our immune system, the T cells, have receptors. We can form billions and billions of these receptors, all with different shapes that bind to different proteins. The T cells help us fight infection, and without them we cannot live long. Among all this diversity, some T-cell receptors will unavoidably 
recognize proteins and structures in our own bodies, so-called self-reactivity. These self-reactive T cells may become harmful and cause autoimmune diseases such as type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, and rheumatoid arthritis. So how does our body solve this problem? From early life, our T cells are generated in the bone marrow and then travel to the thymus where they go through a test. In this test, harmful self-reactive T cells are eliminated in a process called central tolerance. For a long time, this was believed to be the only way self-tolerance is obtained. However, some self-reactive cells escape out into our circulation and are potentially dangerous. This year's Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine concerns the discovery of how those potentially harmful T cells are kept in check. The discovery started with Shimon Sakaguchi's interest in the phenomenon that removing the thymus from mice three days after birth led to an overreactive immune system which caused autoimmune diseases. However, if T cells from healthy mice were injected, the development of autoimmune disease was prevented. Sakaguchi realized that among these injected cells, there must be some cells that protect against the overreactive immune system and autoimmune diseases. He started a long search for these cells. Years later, he discovered that if the T cells to be transferred were depleted of cells with the cell surface protein CD25, this pool of cells would no longer protect against autoimmune diseases. But if the T cells with CD25 were also injected, the mice were protected. Sakaguchi called these CD25 positive cells regulatory T cells. Many researchers were, however, skeptical skeptical about the existence of regulatory T cells. The critical missing piece would come from Mary Branco and Fred Ramsdell. They studied a mouse strain called scurvy because of its scaly skin. The scaly skin was part of the severe autoimmune disease the mice developed. Branco and Ramsdell wanted to find a mutation causing the disease. Other researchers had shown that the scurvy mutation was somewhere in the middle of the X chromosome. Today it's possible to map the mouse genome, the Hubble genome, in a few days, but at the time it was an incredible challenge and like looking for a needle in a haystack. Bronco Rumstead still took on the enormous work of mapping the middle part of the X chromosome in detail and eventually established that the section of interest contained 20 potential genes. They then examined gene after gene. It was only with the 20th and last examined genes that they found the mutation. The 40 gene was previously unknown, but had many similarities with a group of genes called forkhead box, or fox genes, and they named the new gene FOXP3. Branko and Ramstel suspected that the rare autoimmune disease, IPEX, which is also linked to the X chromosome, could be the human variant of the scurvy mouse disease. To understand if that was the case, they analyzed samples from children with IPEX and found mutations in the FOXP3 gene. These findings connected the FOXP3 gene also to human autoimmune disease. These two key discoveries, Sakaguchi's identification of cells that regulate immune responses, and Branko's and Ramsdell's identification of the FOXP3 gene as important for keeping the immune system in control, indicated that the FOXP3 gene could be important for regulatory T cells. 
Shimon's Sakaguchi was first to show that FOXP3 is actually essential for the development of the regulatory T cells, so called T Rex, and therefore critical in the peripheral immune tolerance. This was soon followed by reports from other scientists and unleashed a whole new field in immunology. Subsequent studies show that when all the reactive T cells get activated, the regulatory T cells act to control them, both through cell-cell contacts and by soluble molecules. In this way, immune tolerance can be maintained without deleting too many T cells, which could be needed for our protection against current or future microbes. The discoveries have spurred development of several potential new treatments. Clinical trials are ongoing to increase the number of regulatory T cells for suppressing unwanted immune reactions in autoimmune disease or following organ transplantation. This is done either by injecting growth factors that stimulate regulatory T cells or by multiplying regulatory T cells in laboratories which can then be given to patients. The opposite approach is used in trials for cancer. Cancer cells can make use of our regulatory T cells to avoid immune reactions that could destroy the cancer cells. For cancer treatments, the focus is therefore on down-regulating or destroying the regulatory T cells so that our immune system can act against the malignant cells. To summarize, Mary Branco, Fred Ramsdell, and Shimon Sakaguchi have provided fundamental knowledge of how the immune system is regulated and are therefore awarded this year's Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their discoveries concerning peripheral immune tolerance. Thank you, Marie. Uh, so with that, uh, I would like to open up for questions. So please raise your hand and maybe say your name. Uh, any question? Here we have one question. Yeah, uh, from Associated Press. Have you managed to reach one of the laureates today? Oh. Yeah, you, you said it exact, exactly right. I was able to reach one of the laureates. <laughs> and that, that was Shimon Sakaguchi who I reached. Uh, uh, he, uh, uh, I, I got hold of him uh, at, at his lab uh, and uh, uh, he, he uh, sounded incredibly grateful and um, expressed that it was a fantastic honor. And, uh, he, he was quite taken by the news. Uh, fortunately, I had a lot of information to give him, so that worked out okay. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to reach any of the other two. They are probably, we have uh, their phone numbers, but they are probably on uh, silent mode, and uh, I asked them to, if they have a chance, call me back. One else? Yes? Sure. Could you please say something about the concrete treatments that are based on the, this year's finding? Yeah, uh, so I, I'll give the word to, uh, yeah, and I, I forgot to introduce also, we have two additional experts here. Uh, Dunila Hossam Gelsdam, uh, member of the Nobel Committee, and also Ole Champe, chair of the Nobel Committee. And Ole, if you could take that first question. Yes. Well, what you have to, sorry, what you have to realize is that this year's Nobel laureate get the prize for discovering a principle, the principle where peripheral tolerance is mediated by T regulatory sets that are <laughs> FOXP3 positive. So, having that said, there is quite a lot of development going on. But it's still early studies. 
which are both uh, some negative studies and some uh, studies that in an early phase has given positive results, like for example stimulating of the IL-2 receptor in patients with atopic dermatitis. So the IL-2 receptor is the same as the CD25. So, and there is a lot of CD25 on T regulatory cells, and then you can stimulate them, you expand them, and you get more T regs. Um, that's one study that has worked, but there are many more alternatives using uh, genetic methods to insert specific T cell receptors. If you know what the receptor against the specific autoantigen is, you can get much more forceful T regulatory cells. Or you can use the CAR T principle. You have, you have genetically an antibody to the area where you want this suppression to occur. But as I said, we are in early days. More. Here we have one, yes. Uh, hello, uh, Bob Radzijewski from the Polish Television. Uh, I want to ask, because as you mentioned, uh, this year's prize, uh, not unlike last year's, goes to uh, what, would you, would you, what you would call fundamental research that furthers our understanding of, of physiology and medicine. Uh, and then later finds its practical applications. Uh, why does the Global Committee decide to once again uh, emphasize that this area, this kind of research, as a uh, fundamental in the science? Thank you very much. Maybe I could just briefly uh, answer that. Uh, th this is the price in physiology or medicine. And as you say, I mean, they're tightly connected because physiology knowledge leads to medical treatments and uh, actually as Ulle mentioned there's a lot going on there are currently over 200 clinical trials uh, involving regulatory T cells uh, and it starts there but you're absolutely right this is the price for a fundamental new discovery and understanding um, and it's a mix of that we, we don't deliberately take uh, a decision that this year it's going to be this or that we, we always take the most suitable proposal that we have uh, scrutinized and, and uh, reviewed sufficiently, and that is really worthy of an impact on us. Any more? I know people are usually eager for their interviews, but maybe you have something you're curious about that everyone else will be as well. Doesn't seem so. Uh, and uh, then we thank you very much for coming. And uh, those of you who have planned uh, interviews are welcome to uh, find your location, and we will help everyone as rapidly and fast as we can. Thank you so much.